In this video, I'm going to talk about the free state symbol and the ASME GD&T standards. So you don't see the free state symbol very often. And the reason is, in the ASME system, all parts are inspected in the free state unless otherwise specified. So what does that mean? Well, it just means you can't physically deform the part to measure it. So for a machined part, this probably doesn't really matter, right? A lot of you know, parts, you couldn't deform it if you really wanted to, this big chunk of metal. But say if it's made out of rubber or it's a sheet metal part, you might be able to flex and bend it a little bit to achieve a better measurement. Now, this means you can't use you know, bolts or clamps or you know, say you're going to put it on a coordinate measuring machine. Uh, you can't change it uh, physically. You can use you know, clamps to hold it and keep it from moving around on you. You just can't change it dimensionally. Now, there's a little bit of gray area with this. Um, you know, you got to put enough force to keep the part from moving. And that brings me to another uh, thing I've already made a video about. Uh, rule number one, the concept that perfect form applies at maximum material condition, only applies for rigid parts. So if a part is non-rigid, rule number one doesn't apply. So you could uh, you know, get different measurements on that. And I'll put a, the link in the description for that one. Now, if you are designing a sheet metal part or you're checking a sheet metal part that, you know, uh, say had some set bent into it, uh, but you know it's going to get bolted down and any bend it has in it will get straightened out when it gets put into service, what you would do is specify on the drawing how it's going to be restrained at assembly. So basically the way you know, the ASME standard shows it is you need to tell uh, the user what kind of fastener, how much torque, and then where the fasteners are going. Normally there'll be something like bolt holes, so it's going to be obvious how are you going to fasten it down. Uh, if you had to, you could specify areas where a clamp should go. Uh, in any case, you want to be very specific about how much force is going to be applied to the part. Uh, if at all possible, you just take the torque values from your assembly and just copy those over so everything will match up. You know, it'll get inspected just like it's getting assembled. Let me put an example on the board of a, a sheet metal part where you could do this. So here's an example on the board, right? Not completely defined or anything. It's just a little, uh, you know, bracket or something made out of some kind of thin metal, let's say. What we're going to do here is we've got uh, co uh, two planes that are coplanar, but there's a gap between. I'm going to imagine this gets made in such a way that it's possible for these to bend up a little bit. But at assembly, they're going to get bolted down through here. So we don't really care, right? It's okay if they're a little bit bent. So what I do here is specify a profile to these two surfaces. So this is going to control the coplanarity. And because when it gets inspected, it's going to get bolted down, right? It would be kind of impossible to check that bottom surface. So I'm going to apply that at the free state. So this is where your free state modifier will come in, right? There's no real reason for this to be held to a super tight tolerance if you're going to restrain it uh, at inspection. So we've got this surface controlled. Now we've got our regular profile, 60 thousandths, to datum A, and our note. This is probably the most important thing uh, going on here. You want to be specific as you can. So restrain with a quarter inch socket head cap screws uh, in both holes, one hole, two hole, with uh, five foot pounds of torque or whatever your torque spec is. And that'll give a good description of how and how much force is to be applied at uh, inspection. So typically this is just used for you know, parts that might flex on you. Again, I've probably said sheet metal 50 times, but sheet metal parts where you know at assembly, you're going to have enough force to bend the part back into position. So there's no need for manufacturing to stress about keeping these two surfaces more coplanar than this large number right 
here. Now, the last thing, you can uh, apply the free state symbol. It's typically with the tolerance in the feature control frame. You can put it with the datum reference. Uh, I would say that's much, much less common, but it is possible to do. Uh, it's also possible if you wanted to put it with a dimension, you can do that as well. Uh, but if you ever wondered why you don't see that one very often, you know, there's like a list of symbols and some of them get used all the time, some of them never get used. This is the reason. It's always got to be paired with a restraint note because like I said at the beginning, everything applies at free state unless otherwise specified. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below.